Hi friends, welcome to my channel, my name's Fiddle. In this episode, we're going to continue with Ginger's project, and we'll be making a broom that sweeps on its own, an old-fashioned kitchen table, and a way I discovered to make moss that I thought was pretty interesting. Sorry about my voice being a little bit funny, I am fighting a cold. As always, check out the link in the description, and that will take you to the scavenger hunt, where you'll find the list of materials that you'll need to make these on your own. Okay, let's get started. First, you'll need a small bit of wood. This could be a chopstick, a square dowel, or even a few popsicle sticks glued together. I went with a thin sliver of solid craft wood, and cut it about 3 inches long. Next, grab a pencil and draw out what you want your broom handle to look like. I went with an S shape, but I did end up trimming the end a little bit. Now we can cut it out and sand it down to get to the final design. I used my easy cutter to get the outside edge as much as I could, and then I used a marker with some sandpaper wrapped around it. This gives me the curve that I need, and you can even use a smaller marker if you have a smaller curve that you need to get into. This gives us the rounded shape that we need, and it has more stability than just the paper itself. And I used the lid arm to hold the sandpaper to the pen. After a bit of sanding, you should have a broomstick. Set it aside for now, we'll come back to it later. We're going to move along to the bristles. For this, you're going to need twine, a pair of scissors, and a piece of sheet plastic, or a grocery bag, or a non-pore surface that you can peel glue off of. We're going to start by cutting the string in about 2 inch long pieces. And the more you have, the fuller your broom would be. I think around 30 would be a good place to start. I also use this method to thatch the roof. Once you have about 30 pieces built up, we're going to lay a thick line of glue across our plastic. Next, trying to keep your string going in the same direction and as close as possible to each other. Lay the ends in the glue. While that's drying, we're going to turn our attention back to the broomstick. Because everything in the hutch is so dark, I didn't want to leave it plain wood, so I colored it with a couple of brown markers. You can also use paint or stain to get the same effect. But I use alcohol markers for just about everything. You don't have to wait for dry time, and you can get the color you want. And it looks just like you stained it. Once you have it looking the way you want, you'll need a spring and some UV resin. You could get a spring by taking apart a click down ballpoint pen. The spring I'm using came from a bracelet that I had taken apart a long time ago. Add a dab of resin to the end of the broom and spring and then let them cure together. And a test bounce to make sure it works. Now we can move on to adding the bristles. Once it's completely dry, carefully peel off the bristle strip, which is pretty satisfying to do, like peeling off the plastic from a new electronic. The next part is optional. I have made brooms without doing this. I trim them at an angle so that way when I go to brush all this out, I have different layers. Or you can wait until after you get the bristles on to design it how you like. Now you'll need a wire brush and some patience. And we're going to start at the bottom and work our way towards the top like we would with our own hair. For some of you, this may be easier than others. It really depends on the ply of your twine. I'm using six ply, but the kind that you get at the dollar store is usually a two or three ply. All of them will work, but the two or three ply may be more apt to come apart, so take your time while you're brushing. And keep your fingers out of the way, I stab myself a few times. Also, it's a good idea to save all the shaggy bits that come off of this, because you can use it as flocking or even stuffing. Lots and lots of brushing later, you should have something that looks like this. Now we're ready to add the bristles. Trim off any of the excess dry glue you may have, and then put a glue line along your glue line. Now starting with the long bristles, if you cut them that way, then start wrapping them around the end of your broomstick. Now add a line of glue just a little bit down from where you started. We're going to add a few wraps of thread or embroidery thread would work as well. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're going to give it a haircut. Start by cutting just a little bit shorter than your spring. Then cut the rest in your liking. I tried to go with a bit of a teardrop shape. And now you've got a broom that moves on its own. Okay, now we can start on the table. For this piece, I kind of guessed everything. I just needed something to fill the space and give me somewhere to put the glowing cauldron. So I didn't take any measurements or get really fancy with it. The tabletop is roughly two and a half by one and a half inches. The legs are made from the ends of chopsticks that you break apart. And I used a pencil sharpener to make the other end pointy. And they're about two inches long. But I do end up making them shorter. First, I glued down all four legs going the same direction. Then I measured and cut four dowels that fit in between all of the legs so they would have more support. Okay, after getting it this far, I sat it in the house and there were quite a few things that I didn't like about it. But I had ways to fix it. To start with, I wanted the top of the table to be a little bit bigger, so I measured and cut a bigger piece of craft wood. And before gluing the pieces together, I checked and measured again to make sure that I liked the fit. That was better, but it's still too tall, so I needed to chop the legs down. Now with those problems fixed, I can go ahead and color it with my brown marker. Again, you can use paint or stain if you want to. Then I glued the top down to the base. And now I have a table for the little cauldrons. And I kind of figured that this tutorial was going to be pretty short, so I decided to add in how I made this moss. This may not be new to some of you, but it may be new to others, and it's something that I learned on my own, so I figured I would share it. I really liked the way that it was looking, but I needed to add more to the inside to give it more detail. And if this is supposed to be a cottage in the middle of the woods, I would figure there's pretty much moss everywhere. The trick was figuring out what to make the moss out of. I had chalk pastels, but I don't have much paint, and especially in green. So I figured I could try to use the chalk pastel somehow. But I also knew that I didn't have enough to last the whole project, and going to the store and buying more really wasn't an option. But I did remember that you can add cornstarch to paint and expand it so that way you have more paint than what you did before. And also it helps with better coverage. And I was wondering if I could add that type of thinking to the moss. And I did use cornstarch at first and it worked okay, but there wasn't much texture to it. So instead I ended up using baking soda and mixing that with the chalk pastel. And that gave me enough to cover lots of this project. Baking soda and chalk pastels did the trick. And with that, it brings us to the end of our tutorial. Next will be a pretty long one, and that will be the structure and how to finish this piece up. I hope this gives you ideas for your next project. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, as it all really helps me out a lot. And thank you so much, Ginger, and I'll see you next time.